As many of you are probably aware, the criminal trial of former police officer Derek Chauvin in the George Floyd case is being broadcast publicly. And I've been following it fairly closely. And I have to say, following statements made by the defense today, questions asked and statements made by witnesses, I genuinely believe that should the jury remain impartial and go through the evidence fairly, Derek Chauvin will be acquitted. The defense asked a series of questions that, in my opinion, absolutely present reasonable doubt. And some of this information has been available for months. But upon hearing the testimony from George Floyd's girlfriend, I'm sorry, I genuinely believe this will result in an acquittal on all charges. Now, before I used to say perhaps as an argument over manslaughter, there still sort of is. But for me, no, I think it's an acquittal. I'm just going to come out and say it very controversially after looking over the evidence and what was said. It appears now that George Floyd may have been in the middle of a drug deal when the police approached him. Previously, Judge Cahill had stated it appears that there was a tablet or something on the tongue of George Floyd. And the toxicology report came back showing that George Floyd had a substantial amount of fentanyl in his system. It would seem it was a drug deal. I won't bury the lead. George Floyd's girlfriend said that there was a there's a man, Maurice Lester Hall, and that George Floyd and him didn't spend a whole lot of time together, but sometimes she was also apparently in a statement to investigators. She also stated that they had obtained drugs from this man. That made me think. And again, it's just my opinion. We'll go through the evidence. If George Floyd didn't really hang out with this guy all that much, if this guy had provided them with drugs in the past and breaking news, Maurice Lester Hall, who once said he would be the voice voice of George Floyd, is now pleading the fifth, shocking everyone, saying he will not testify. It sounds like he was, in fact, just their dealer. It sounds like George Floyd was suffering from a drug overdose. The defense asked very important questions, pointing out that only a few months prior, George Floyd had complained of stomach pains. He had been foaming at the mouth and had to go to the hospital for a drug overdose. His girlfriend confirmed this. Seemed to be that she did not necessarily want to. Again, all of my opinion. But after watching this, it genuinely seems like while he was being arrested for the use, allegedly, of a counterfeit $20 bill, he was experiencing the same symptoms. Many people have stated in this video, George Floyd's apparently saying, I can't breathe before he was even put on the ground. Officers are pointing out he was foaming at the mouth. And the toxicology report shows that he had more than enough fentanyl in a system system to cause an overdose. He was complaining of stomach pains, the same symptoms he had in his previous overdose. I want to go through what the law says. I want to show you what the George Floyd's girlfriend says. To me, it feels rather definitive. Now, we don't know for sure. Maybe the jury will look at this politically and say the city will burn to the ground if Chauvin is found not guilty. But there is a real problem of justice here. The state, in my opinion, does hold some responsibility, but the state is prosecuting Chauvin, a man who was trained to use that knee neck restraint. That's other information that was released by the defense. It would seem that perhaps the only thing they can really do is pay out a historic settlement, $27 million, which they did. And Chauvin was just doing as he was told by the state. Now, you may say that was wrong. And I hear you. We don't like the idea that he was perhaps negligent. Perhaps he shouldn't have used his, his knee in this way on George Floyd. But it was the state. It was the police. I told him to do it. I'm sorry, they can't turn around and then prosecute him for what they told him to do. All of this, in my opinion, presents more than reasonable doubt. But let me show you the evidence, because my opinion very well may be wrong. And he may be convicted. And there's maybe a lot that, that is yet to be seen. But today's evidence is rather shocking. Before we get started, make sure you head over to TimCast.com and become a member to get access to exclusive members only segments of the TimCast IRL podcast. The purge is real, man. You know, you've, that you've seen them going after Steven Crowder. It's very likely that we're next on the chopping block. So we set up TimCast.com as a way to make sure that should anything happen, our content will still exist somewhere. Becoming a member gets you exclusive access to members-only segments with Jack Murphy and Jeremy Hambly and Cassandra Fairbanks and James O'Keefe. Full-on bonus episodes up to an hour long. So please consider joining. But don't forget to like, share, subscribe, hit that notification bell. Let's get to it. Serious stuff. The Daily Mail reports. George Floyd's girlfriend breaks down in court 
as she reveals they were both addicted to opioids and the drugs were sold by his friend who refuses to testify at Derek Chauvin's murder trial. This is huge, my friends. George Floyd's girlfriend, Courtney Ross, revealed today that they both purchased opioids from a friend who was in the passenger seat of Floyd's car on the day he died and is now refusing to testify at Derek Chauvin's murder trial. The friend, Maurice Lester Hall, a key witness for the state, filed a shock notice on Wednesday stating that he plans to invoke the Fifth Amendment against self-incrimination, meaning he will not testify. He was a witness for the state, for the prosecution. He's out. They needed him. He was did they, a key witness. What did they have? The questions I ask. Why was a man who had sold drugs to these people in the past sitting in the passenger seat of his car? Why did a judge say that it looked like George Floyd had something on his tongue? Why did George Floyd have all these drugs in his system? Could it have been a drug deal gone wrong? It could have been. This is in no way meant to absolve the state of their responsibilities and no way going to absolve the police officers of any accountability or liability. The point is, as an individual, the state does not seem able to scapegoat Derek Chauvin. And I plead this to, to the left and those who, who want justice for George Floyd. We must hold the state accountable. The state. I mean the government, not one random guy. The state who implements these training policies, who implements these over, overall policies on how they handle these things. It is ultimately their responsibility. But right now, it is the state trying to prosecute and scapegoat Derek Chauvin. I know it's a much bolder opinion than I've had in the past, but I've been looking over the evidence. I've been following this trial. They say when Ross was cross examined by Chauvin's attorney, Eric Nelson, on Thursday, jurors heard that Hall sold controlled substances to both her and Floyd and that she did not like Maury's at all. Ross told the court how in March 2020, just two months before Floyd's death, he purchased pills that she did not recognize as the opioids to which both she and Floyd were addicted. She said the pills, which she believed landed Floyd in the hospital due to an accidental overdose, appeared thick and were not uniform, and that when she took them, they did not have the same effect as opioids. The pill seemed like it was really a really strong stimulant. I couldn't sleep at all that night. I felt very jittery. Earlier, Assistant Attorney General Matthew Frank had broached the issue of Floyd's drug use in an attempt to diffuse any damage that it might do should the jurors hear it first from the defense. Here's what I want to tell all of you. I, I, I have the utmost sympathy and empathy for George Floyd and his girlfriend. Opioid addiction is no laughing matter. And many people in this country are suffering from the epidemic of opioid abuse. It is addictive. People get prescribed this because prescribed this because they have some kind of pain or, or an ailment. But it is it creates a physiological dependence and people can have withdrawal symptoms from this. And so they become addicted. And then this is what happens. This is a tragic story. Now, we can complain about the system of policing, and I believe police reform is warranted. We can complain that maybe the police didn't do everything right, but it really does feel like a sad tragedy. And I don't know if justice is served by locking up the officers who were responding to a call where a man was suffering from taking too many drugs. This is more tragedy to me than anything. And this man, Maurice Lester Hall, was in the car and now he's refusing to testify. Another very important bit of evidence that was revealed in the trial. Courtney Ross, George Floyd's girlfriend, she stated that in the phone of George Floyd, she is listed as Mama. That's her nickname. That's the term of endearment that George Floyd would use for her, Mama. Many people saw that video, including myself, and we were, were, were brought to uh, nearly brought to tears. Seeing this man beg for his mother, well, now we know it very well may have been him begging for the woman that he loved. It's sad. When I saw that and I saw uh, uh, Ross cry, man, that, that broke my heart. They, the, I can't, I, the defense brought this up. They asked her, what, did George, how, what was the name that George Floyd had for you? I'm, I'm sorry, he said. Let me, let me strike that. What, were, what, were, uh, what was your name saved as in George Floyd's phone? And she said, Mama. And then I learned that George Floyd was on the ground begging for the woman that he loved. And it's sad, man. And I'm like, you know, I feel that emotion and it breaks my heart. This whole situation, it's terrifying. It's horrifying. It's saddening. It's maddening. It makes me angry. But it doesn't mean that we lock people in prison. It doesn't. I don't like the prison system. I don't want retribution. I don't want a symbol 
I want real reform and real justice, and I do not believe it will be served at this point based on everything I've heard. Let me just let me let me just go through some of this evidence. Brant Williams, he is a reporter in Minneapolis, Minnesota Public Radio, tweeted, Ross says she and Floyd had bought drugs for Maurice Hall, who was with Floyd on May 25th, 2020. Hall has filed a motion saying he will invoke his Fifth Amendment rights to avoid incriminating himself if called to testify. Now, I don't know if that means he did anything wrong, and I'm not going to assume it, but she stated that he was their dealer. I want to go back in time for you. This is from PBS, and this is important. In a PBS article from July 9th, 2020, transcripts show officer told George Floyd it takes a lot of oxygen to talk before his death. At one point, they, 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 they mentioned, Gray said Floyd was acting erratically and had foam at his mouth, according to the body camera video transcripts. When asked about the foam and whether he was on something, Floyd said he was scared and had been playing basketball. The reason this is important, they say as, as officers struggled to get Floyd into the squad car, Floyd said, I can't breathe and I want to lay on the ground, the transcripts say. This is from July 9th, 2020. He said, I can't breathe before he was placed on the ground. Shortness of breath, stomach pains, foaming at the mouth. I think there is reasonable doubt. Do I know that there was a drug deal? Of course not. I could be wrong about that. That's just my opinion based on what I've seen. Do I know that he was suffering from an overdose? I don't. I literally don't. But I believe there's reasonable doubt. A lot of people, I've gotten comments and they're like, Chauvin was on his neck for eight minutes and 46 seconds. And, and you know, what, what do we do about this? And I'm just like, listen, that's not the issue here is reasonable doubt. Will the jury hear these things and say, you know, honestly, I just don't know. And that's all it takes. You need to be proven guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. And that's not what's happening. Now, testimony at Derek Chauvin trial triggers talk of expectations for retail workers to stopping theft. I'm not super concerned about the, the bulk of that article. I'm more interested in what they say. George Floyd appeared to be on drugs. Let me read some for you. They say cashier Christopher Martin thought something was off with a $20 bill a customer used to pay for cigarettes last May at the South Minneapolis convenience store where he worked. The bill was just a little too blue, and Martin decided to flag it to a manager. Before long, Martin saw the customer, later known to the world as George Floyd, handcuffed on the pavement and pleading for breath under the restraint of a Minneapolis police, Minneapolis police, the life, the life draining from his body. Martin, 19, paced outside anxiously, looking on in disbelief and guilt. He testified, if I would have just not taken the bill, this could have been avoided. Martin's gripping testimony triggered community discussions about retailers' expectations. Martin, who worked at Cup Foods and lived upstairs with his family, testified that the store's policy was that employees who accepted counterfeit bills from customers had to cover the lost money out of their paychecks. Martin testified that another man uh, came in first with a counterfeit bill and they wouldn't accept it. Then Floyd came in with a bill that the clerk was skeptical about. Martin didn't know Floyd, but Floyd had been friendly and talkative, though he appeared to be under the influence. And that's reasonable doubt, my friends. Let's go through some of the charges. What is Chauvin facing? First, murder in the second degree from reviser.mn.gov. They say murder in the second degree, intentional murder, drive by shootings. Whoever does either of the following is guilty of murder. In the second degree, causes the death of a human being with intent to affect the death of that person, but without premeditation, or causes the death of a human being while committing or attempting to commit a drive-by shooting. Let's just stop right there. It says, causing the death of a human be being with the intent to cause that death. Based on everything we've seen, does it appear that Chauvin wanted to kill this man? I don't believe so. Maybe he did, but reasonable doubt absolutely, in my opinion, established. That's just my opinion. Maybe I'm wrong. OK, well, they reinstated my understanding. They reinstated murder in the third degree. OK, let's read what this means. According to the same website, Minnesota at Minnesota.gov, murder in the third degree is defined as whoever without intent to affect the death of any person causes the death of another person by perpetrating an act eminently dangerous to others and evincing a depraved mind without regard for human life is guilty of murder in the third degree and may be sentenced to imprisonment of, uh, for not more than 25 years. Subsection uh, sec section B, whoever without intent to cause death proximately causes the death of a human being by directly or indirectly unlawfully selling, giving away, bartering, delivering or exchanging or distributing or administering a controlled substance. Aha. Now, that may be 
what potentially could have implicated Maurice Lester Hall. If it turns out in this trial that they come to the conclusion that George Floyd died because he had ingested drugs, it would appear that his friend was actually at fault in mur- for murder in the third degree. And that is the important, one of the most important takeaways. The pieces start coming together. Maurice Lester Hall was known, according to the girlfriend, to have sold them drugs in the past. And that constitutes murder in the third degree. If it's true, George Floyd died because he ingested what was provided to him. So I'm not surprised then that Maurice Lester Hall has said he will invoke the Fifth Amendment. It doesn't mean he's guilty of anything. You have a right to, to plead the Fifth. It does not mean you've committed a crime. In my opinion, it just looks that this may be the case. Lastly, manslaughter in the second degree. They say, now, 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 let me stop for a second. I've said for a while, maybe manslaughter is where they get chauvin. Maybe. We're going to go through this because I no longer believe that's the case. Now, far be it from me to determine what a jury will or won't say, will or won't believe. There have been instances of sidebar and things stricken from the record. So maybe they'll consider different evidence than I have. They may come to a different conclusion. In my opinion, at this time, and there's still a trial ongoing, it may be, in my opinion, Chauvin will be acquitted. I don't know that for sure, though. But even on manslaughter charges, Minnesota.gov says manslaughter in second degree. A person who causes the death of another by any of the following means is guilty of manslaughter in the second degree and may be sentenced to imprisonment for not more than 10 years or to a payment of a fine not more than $20,000 or both. One, by the person's culpable negligence, whereby the person creates an unreasonable risk and consciously takes chances of causing death of great bodily harm to another or by shooting another with a firearm, that's out, that, that's meaningless. Setting a spring gun, pitfall, that's not, not relevant here. Negligently or intentionally permitting any animal, mm, not relevant. By committing or attempting to c- commit a violation of 609.378, neglect or endangerment of a child. Okay, stop. The only thing we have here is 609.205 uh, uh, section one. By the person's culpable negligence, whereby the person creates an unreasonable risk. Could it be? that Derek Chauvin created an unreasonable risk. I'm sorry, I just have to say no, and I believe Chauvin would be acquitted. Let me show you the evidence. This, is, this was released, my understanding, by the defense. It says, okay, they are in handcuffs. Now what? You've probably seen it before. I've covered this before. This is from a training manual. It says, sudden cardiac arrest typically occurs immediately following a violent struggle. Place the subject in the recovery position to alleviate positional asphyxia. Once in handcuffs, get EMS on the scene quickly to monitor and transport. Sign a transport hold on these individuals and complete a CIC report. Maybe there's more I don't know. But in the image, you can see in a police training video, this is not a legitimate video, so YouTube, I hope you understand that. This is just police training videos. It's a photograph of of a man with his knee on the neck of another man explaining that this So it appears to say is the recovery position. Now, I looked into it a little bit and appears the reason they do this with the knee on the neck is because if you put your knee on their back, you can compress their chest and cause them to asphyxiate. Many people have said, but Tim, what about the witnesses who testified it was a dangerous blood choke? So what one guy said, apparently it was an MMA fighter. He said that this was a dangerous blood choke and they warned Chauvin, to stop, I believe they, they might have the, uh, the MMA fighter here. MMA fighter and bystander Donald Williams. This is, uh, l- let me read this for you, and then we'll break this down. Donald Wynn Williams H., a mixed martial artist fighter, and the prosecution's third witness, who had yelled at Sh- Sh- uh, Chauvin to check for a pulse and accused him of placing Floyd in what he called a kill choke, testified first on Monday before continuing on Tuesday. Williams became emotional as he spoke about how he called 911 after Floyd was pay- placed in an ambulance because I believed I just witnessed a murder. I felt the need to call the police on the police. He began to cry as jurors were played audio of the call in which he named Officer 987 and said he just pretty much killed this guy. He wasn't resisting arrest. He had his knee on his neck. He wasn't resisting arrest or nothing. He was handcuffed. Williams said he witnessed Chauvin shimmying or adjusting his, his position on Floyd's neck in a recognized martial art maneuver designed to double down on and tighten a chokehold. He told how he watched Chauvin squeeze the life out of Floyd, who he said was in tremendous pain and faded away like a fish in a bag. He said that when he called Chauvin out for using a blood choke, the officer looked him straight in the eye and did not stop. Williams also told how Officer Tao Thao put his hand on the chest and pushed him back to the curb when he tried to intervene. 
According to Williams, the crowd that had gathered was not threatening the officers and his calls to check for a pulse were echoed by an off-duty firefighter whose pleas to the officers also went unheard. At the end of his 911 call, Williams was heard shouting at Tao, y'all murderers, man, y'all murderers. On cross-examination, Chauvin's attorney Nelson attempted to undercut Williams' presentation of himself as a controlled and professional observer of events who remained schooled by his training and experience in sports and security. Nelson appeared to be trying to provoke Williams into a display of anger as he repeatedly tried to discredit his claims to having, uh, to having remained calm. You started calling Chauvin names, didn't you? You called him a tough guy. You called him such a man, bogus. You called him a bum 13 times. You called him the B word. But while Williams agreed to all of those assertions, he would not be persuaded to agree to Nelson's characterization of him as angry or threatening. Asked if he had told the officer Tao Tao, uh, Tao, 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 Tao that he hoped he would, I'm not going to repeat that. No, I said, you will shoot yourself in two years because of what you did. Yikes. Was it a dangerous blood chuck? I'm not an expert. It may have been. The problem still arises with this photo. Derek Chauvin. I'm not saying he's a good guy. I'm not saying he's innocent. I'm saying reasonable doubt when we're talking about the charges. That's all it takes. Maybe there was intent. I don't know, but I have doubt. And I'm not saying I like this guy. I don't know the guy. But I also think this. You're arresting and detaining someone. You have reason to believe they've committed a crime, may have been involved in a, in, in a drug deal, may have taken drugs. The cops have already said he's on something. They're concerned about, I believe it's called excited delirium. And so they've put this man in the position they were trained to put him in. A bunch of people are screaming at you. Am I to assume that Chauvin knew what each and every one of these individuals was saying to him in this moment? Perhaps there's still an argument about Chauvin putting his knee on the neck of Floyd for too long. Well, I may be, may, be, may be able to present you some reasonable doubt beyond that as well. I give you the Hennepin County uh, Toxicology Report. They say, toxicology, see attached report for full details. Testing performed on antemortem blood specimens collected 5 20 at 9 p.m. at HHC and on postmortem urine. A, blood drug and novel psychoactive substance screens show one, Fentanyl at 11 nanograms per milliliter. Two, norfentanyl at 5.6 nanograms per milliliter. Three, four dash ANPP at 0.65 nanograms per milliliter. Four, methamphetamine at 19 nanograms per milliliter. Five, 11 hydroxy delta 9 THC, delta 9 carboxy THC, 42 nanograms per milliliter, delta 9 THC 2.9 nanograms per milliliter. Cotinine positive, caffeine positive. I have not looked up the fatal dose of methamphetamine. I did, however, look up fentanyl because that was what was um, in question. Tucker Carlson was bold enough to say that he was, he did die from a, a drug overdose. I'm still not saying that. I am absolutely not saying that. I've long maintained that the medical uh, report says a combination of multiple factors, including a heart condition, drugs in a system, and restraint. Far be it from me to question the medical examiner, but I do believe reasonable doubt is being uh, attained here. As much as I can't tell you what was the number one cause or what the factors were, I can only defer to the expert. I can point out other experts. Fentanyl at 11 nanograms per milliliter. Okay. This is from emcdda.europa.eu, pharmacology of fentanyl. They say overdose results in respiratory depression which is reversible with naloxone, respiratory depression. Maybe like I can't breathe. Maybe why he had been saying I can't breathe, breathe before he was restrained. They say sudden death can also occur because of cardiac arrest or severe anaphylactic reaction. The estimated lethal dose of fentanyl in humans is two milligrams. The recommended serum concentration for analgesia, analgesia is one to two nanograms per milliliter. And for anesthesia, it is 10 to 20 nanograms per milliliter. Blood concentrations of approximately 7 nanograms per milliliter or greater have been associated with fatalities where polysubstance use was involved. While fatalities have been reported after therapeutic use, many deaths have occurred as a result of the misuse of pharmaceutical products. Both used and unused fentanyl patches have been injected, smoked, snorted, or taken orally with fatal consequences. 7 nanograms per milliliter with polysubstance use. George Floyd had 11 nanograms per milliliter per the toxicology report. 
I'm sorry. Reasonable doubt, at least in my opinion. But hold on. Poly substance use. What is that? They say poly drug use involves the consumption of more than one drug at once. Although poly substance abuse often refers to the abuse of multiple illicit drugs, it is also inclusive of prescription medications used in non-medical circumstances. Let's go back. Multiple substances, THC, methamphetamine, fentanyl. Now, many may be asking, what is norfentanyl? My understanding of norfentanyl, and I am not a chemist. It is hard for me to break a lot of these things down. I didn't read into every single possible uh, drug yet taken. I don't have the, the lethal, the fatal dose of methamphetamine pulled up. I looked at the fentanyl because that was the claim, and it's listed at number one. And many people have pointed out, including Tucker Carlson. Well, they say this. In one study published at NIH.gov, a study of the urinary concentration of fentanyl and its major metabolite, norfentanyl. What is a metabolite? Well, in this context, I believe it refers to what is produced after your body metabolizes fentanyl, in which case it may be that the norfentanyl in his system is a byproduct produced by the metabolization of the fentanyl in his system, in which case he may have actually had a lot more. Now, I don't know if, if there's a one for one ratio between fentanyl metabolization and norfentanyl. That it's possible that George Floyd had 17 nanograms per milliliter of fentanyl in his system at one point, potentially less. Between 10 and 20 is used for anesthesia. To me, that's a lot. With polysubstance use, seven, which is four nanograms per milliliter higher than what was found in his you know, antemortem blood specimens collected. Or I should say, uh, it says antemortem blood specimens collected at 2520 at 9 p.m. and on postmortem urine. I'm sorry, man. I'm not trying to be mean. I have, I have the utmost sympathy and empathy for people who are addicted to opiates. I wish George Floyd did not experience this. I wish the cashier just let the $20 slide, man. I am sad that this dude lost his life. I don't care. Some people said, Tim, he was driving. I get it, man. I get it. And I understand I think people should be allowed. It should not be a crime to be addicted to something. You need help. This dude wasn't going around hurting people. George Floyd had a video where he was telling kids to stay away from the trouble, stay away from the crimes, the things that he had done in his youth. That's the kind of voice they need. And why was he on opiates? Man, do you think that people just one day wake up and decide to do these things? It's because they're suffering. It's because something is wrong. There are so many people in this country, even Donald Trump talked about this, that are suffering from opioid addiction. I want them to be helped. I don't care if it was a drug deal gone wrong. I don't think it should have been illegal in the first place. I think it's sad. But I don't think justice is served by having the state scapegoat the cops who were told to do this. I think we got a problem with the policing system in this country. I think we need heavy police reforms. And I don't think the problem is solved with a scapegoat. I think we need to focus on what's going on with the laws in this country. I think we need to end the war on drugs. If there was no war on drugs... George Floyd would have been like, is there a problem? It would have been it. I remember uh, these stories from back in the day about college frats and people drinking alcohol. There was one story in particular that I, I, I went over uh, when I was like 18. I remember reading this story, talking about it. Some kid, 18, goes to college, drinks some alcohol, drinks a lot of alcohol, actually. He gets alcohol poisoning. His friends were worried about him. They didn't want to call the police or an ambulance, though. They were worried. He'll get in trouble. Not allowed to drink under the age of 21. So instead, they just put him on his side and put him on a couch and said, he'll be all right. When they woke up, he was dead. When they woke up, they went in the room and they found him dead. How is justice being served in this system when we penalize people for nonviolent offenses like this? George Floyd should still be alive right now. I don't care if you like the guy or not. I don't care if you want to besmirch him based on his past history. I don't fault people for being addicted to drugs. And I think I'm a very libertarian minded person, a little L libertarian, mind you, not the libertarian party. But I, I don't think it should have been a crime. And I think just like this kid who was 18, he's an adult man living on his own at college and he wanted to have some drinks. If it was not illegal for the kids to have it, they'd have called the ambulance and saved his life. Instead, your stupid laws that don't serve justice, freak people out. Look, man, they say all these things are, are, are illegal to take. And I, I'm not a fan of drugs at all. I don't think people should be taking it. Don't break the law. Don't deal in these things. George Floyd, he's responsible for breaking the law. That's true. 
I just think we need to end the war on drugs. And maybe the penalty for these laws should be specific to treatment, not penalty, not prison. That makes no sense putting someone in jail for a nonviolent offense. No, you put them in a clinic. You get them help. You help them break this addiction. George Floyd's girlfriend testified that they had injuries and chronic pain that resulted in prescription medications that turned into addiction. I have heard this story so many times. It's tragedy, man. I don't think justice is served by throwing these these cops under the bus. I don't care if you like the cops or not. It is a simple, immature and childish, childish solution. I'm sorry, it's not even a solution. Take a look at this. Esme Murphy, in September of 2020, reporter anchor for WCCO TV. She tweeted, Judge Cahill says a pill was visible in George Floyd's mouth in Thomas Lane body camera footage from the police tribune. NewsGuard certified. Gray said that body camera video of Floyd's arrest showed a white spot on his tongue that disappeared a moment later. And something had happened in the past. Law and crime reports. This is from March 19th. Derek Chauvin trial judge allows evidence that George Floyd ingested drugs, suffered heart trouble in May 2019. Police stop. Something similar had happened a year before. He had overdosed only a few months before this incident. More than a reasonable doubt, man. I want the system reformed. I want the war on drugs to be over now. I believe that people who are suffering need treatment. I believe the government should be taxing and regulated the use of these drugs. That way, people have an easy path to seek help when they're addicted. People can die from withdrawal, man. People can die from withdrawal to alcohol if they're an alcoholic. These are people who need help. But what do we do? What do we do? Retribution, punishment. It serves no one except maybe private people prison industries. Instead of getting a reasonable discussion about how we can reform the prison system, how can we reform these laws and help people who are sick? Instead of creating rehabilitative justice systems, we get demands for a scapegoat. And so long as the only thing we have in this country is a left that says off with his head and they forget about the real problems, we will not fix this system. How hard would it be to go and demand of our representatives That these laws be changed. The cops find one day after we change these laws, the cops walk up to a man in his vehicle accused of using a counter $20 bill, and he seems to be high on something. And they say, you are right, buddy. And he says, I'm feeling kind of sick. My stomach hurts. I can't breathe. And they say, wait right here. We're going to get you an ambulance. They could have done that now. I know they could have. But George Floyd was worried. He had committed a crime, a very serious one. He was going to go to jail for it because he was addicted. That's so screwed up, man. The system is so screwed up. Justice is not being served for anybody. As long as people are full of rage and they want to just burn things down. And so long as the state is unwilling to accept its responsibility for the systems it creates, they'll give you a scapegoat. They'll prosecute Derek Chauvin, a man who is trained to use the knee neck restraint. They'll now say he did it. It's his fault, not ours. (laughs) Our stupid laws. They won't blame the federal government's stupid laws either. So how about this squad members? How about this progressives? Each and every one of you pass some kind of bill. End the war on drugs now. These people need help for the time being. Listen, I get it. He committed a crime. Don't do drugs, man. Stay away from these illegal substances. I personally can't stand any of it. I witnessed this stuff growing up in Chicago. I witnessed people getting sick. I have all the stories of people overdosing. It's a nightmare reality. And it breaks my heart that there are people who are addicted and don't want to be. And they're living in fear. They could go to prison because of a physiological dependence from a prescription medication. Trump was right about opioids. In this instance, George Floyd, in my opinion, he's still a victim. I get it. He committed a crime. I get it. I do. I want to help people, even people who commit violent crimes. I want to help them, too. I, w- I believe that people can be rehabilitated. I believe that we can help save these people. Instead, we have a punitive retribution system. It's not a justice system. We throw people in the hole. We throw away the key. We radicalize people in prison. We don't we don't care. Maybe we really do, though. And maybe it's time we change this. And the next time someone is suffering from an overdose, they just say, don't worry, You're not in trouble for this. We're going to help you. But see, the police are told to do things. And this is the fault of the system. 
I'm not going to throw the individual under the bus because the system is broken. I can't. I won't do it. I will say each and every one of these police officers needs to stand up to unjust laws. But so long as the laws are in place as we have them, we need to reform the system. Otherwise, more tragedies will happen. Can't the, the, the far left and the, and, and the conservatives agree on this one? The libertarian left, libertarian right, the state is at fault on this one? Well, they're the ones prosecuting Chauvin. It's just BS, man. We'll see how the trial plays out. I'll leave it there. Thanks for hanging out, everybody. The next segment's coming up live tonight at 8 p.m. at youtube.com slash timcastirl. It's a live show, and we'll see you all there.